Before we begin, we, I would like you to just listen carefully to two scriptures that I'm going to read from the New Testament regarding families. Just two verses. You don't have to turn to your Bibles because I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. Amplified Version is something that gives you, that expands the scriptures a little bit more and uh, gives uh, different shades of meaning to the text so that we understand it in its entirety. So I would like to read from uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. You don't have to turn to your Bibles. Just listen carefully. However, let each man, each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates, and esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. This is from Ephesians 5.33. And uh, related verse is one more from 1 Peter 3.2. It says like this, when they observe, this is speaking to the wives, when the husbands observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves, together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes, that is to respect, defer to, revere, Revere him to honor, esteem, appreciate, prize, and in the human sense, to adore him. That is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband. I hope you got what scripture has to say here. In our translations, it only says, Husbands, love your wives, and wives, submit to your husbands. But this um, version amplifies it and makes it very clear. Now you have heard what it really means to submit to your husband and to love your wife. So if only we take these two verses seriously, then there would be no need for us to have meetings like this. But because we are so dull of hearing, and all the time we read, but like Paul says about certain people, they keep on learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For some of us, we may have become dull of hearing and dull of what the scriptures say. We read, but we don't understand. We read for the sake of reading it. It never enters into our heart. So that's why we are the way we are. And we keep fighting. And some of you who have been newly married, you have grand ideas as to how your married life should be. All you have your own, uh, you know, planned uh, married life. It should be like this, it should be like this. My husband should be like this, my wife should be like this. He should treat me like this, she should treat me like this, and all these things. But you know, these are all imaginations. And you need to be realistic about your married life and not idealistic. Ideals are in imagination. 
but realistic is being real and to face the facts that you are living on this planet earth where everything is topsy turvy and nothing is going the way it should go but things can be different and things can be changed when you and i were young and single we used to look around and uh, pass judgment on those who were married and more so those who had children because we used to see some children being very naughty disobedient and things like that we used to judge inwardly uh, see look at this family how they are bringing up children their children are unruly and things like that now that we have got married and have our own children now we have got the taste of our own medicine so we are little soft on that we don't judge them like we used to do when we were young and single so when you put yourself in somebody's shoes then you will know what that person is going through so it is always good to look around and also to look within to be able to have a proper assessment of yourself and of others and once you get married it takes time for you to get adjusted to each other sometimes some couples when they get married within a week or within a month they think you know did i make a mistake in marrying this person i thought married life will be like this glorious like this what i imagined it to be but it is something different because now you are facing realities of life and then um you tend to doubt whether i made any mistake in marrying this person that thought should never be entertained because now you are married you can't do anything about it and don't you ever think that because you see certain families and their children behaving well and some families who are married for 20 30 40 50 years it's going well don't you think that they had it perfect from the beginning there is no marriage which is you know which god has given to us in a platter you know ready made and uh, uh, no no gift wrapped and vacuumed you know no marriage comes out like that we all are living on this earth and after once you are married you you will see that your feet are on earth not in the uh, not in cloud 9 like you were when you were courting or dating or during the time of engagement now your eyes are open to realities and don't think that i wish my husband was like that i wish my wife was like that don't expect such things because wishing like you know my marriage should be like that or like this you don't know what they are going through what they have gone through in their 20 30 40 50 years of married life what they have gone through and what they are going through you do not know and you think everything is hunky dory for them it has not been so from the beginning they have had their fair share of struggles and difficulties misunderstandings and difference of opinions and sometimes maybe arguments but they have worked on it and nothing has come ready made you see 
because they have worked on it they have died to each other each other's demands and self and they have always thought about improvement in their married life and that is how it has gone well with them for the encouragement of us the other day i asked brother zack and sister annie they have been married for 54 55 years and i asked them has your married life been perfect then some of you were here on that sunday and you know the answer that brother zack gave he didn't say yes from day one it has been glorious and perfect he didn't say that you know what he said some of you remember he said far from it he said i hope you were encouraged after that one brother came and thanked me for asking that question because we all think that it's in my marriage should be like brother zacks or brother ians even if i ask brother ian who has been married for 50 years he will say the same thing don't think that any marriage anybody's for instance i'll tell you john wesley he was one of the greatest men of god who lived a couple of centuries back and he had a very terrible wife one day she just walked on him and he was a man who preached on perfect love is that right perfect love and he lived that life even though he had a very terrible wife who walked away on him after 20 years or so so there have been numerous families who have always had and are still having problems in their married life don't think that yours is one exception we are all going through the same thing peter says about that don't think that these fiery trials are happening only to you your brothers or your sisters are going through the same thing all over the world so all families have their own amount of problems between husband and wife between parents and children between in-laws so we need to learn how to deal with them so that is what we are here for and it will take some time for you brothers and sisters to get to know each other especially when you are newly married because you come from different background she comes from different background and education level financial level and various other factors and uh, you need to blend now you need to accept each other the way they are you can't try to change the other person to be like you want them to be that's just not possible if you can't change a person you change and you accept the way they are so by trying to impose myself on the other person i am making life more miserable to the other person it will not go well and they may never change so once i know that it is not going to happen it's better that i work out on myself i change inwardly i die to myself and to my ego and i accept the person the way they are and you give yourself to each other that means time space and don't be too possessive about your married partner especially when you are newly married don't be too possessive they need space they need time for their own so you give them and uh, sometimes newly married couple you know are so jealous about each other they don't want the husband or the wife to go to the parents because they think that if he goes to his parents he will get attached to his 
parents and he will neg neglect me and vice versa that kind of insecurity you need not have you need to give them liberty because you didn't get your husband or wife without his or her parents so your in-laws are valuable they are part of your family now your family is now extended towards your in-laws and you need to accept your in-laws you can't just say no i don't want my in-laws only me and my husband and like that one man said the father bless me and my wife and my son and his wife we four no more so your prayer should not be like that me and my wife and no more no you didn't get your wife or your husband without your in-laws remember that your in-laws are valuable and they have brought them up they have educated them and they have taken care of them and when they are in need you need to take care of them the bible is very clear he who doesn't take care of his own family members like relatives or old parents he is worse than an infidel it says worse than an unbeliever so you have an obligation when they are in need to help them but at the same time make sure that they don't dictate to you and control you you can provide for them you can take care of them sometimes the wife may not be happy about you giving money to your parents or maybe the other way do it like jesus said let not the right hand know what the left hand is doing you can give it in secret without your partner knowing it if that is the case in your family and uh, this in laws problems brothers you need to be little accommodative don't just say no to your in laws and see they have invested in you as a son or as a daughter and uh, don't just say like that verse says in mark 7 i think jesus said to the pharisees you neglect the weightier commandments but you um, are so you know particular about tithing dill and mint and cumin seeds from your uh, from your backyard or from your garden so they were so particular about tithing even some garden herbs but jesus said but if a person says to his parents the money that i could have given you i have put it in the offering box that is not what god expects from you god doesn't want your money to be put in the offering box not is our god is not a beggar that's why we never take an offering here our god owns the whole universe and he has provided for us for these 50 years nearly 50 years without taking an offering or tithes and he has provided for all our needs so don't think that by putting your money into the offering box you are doing a favor to god god doesn't accept it the money that belongs to caesar give to caesar god said the money that belongs to your parents give to your parents not to the offering box so honor your parents if you're not honoring your parents there you see there are two things that jesus said about the parents one he said obey your parents that is when you are small when you were children you had to obey because you were under their care and under their roof and when you grow up and get married now you don't obey them but you honor them without letting them influence you or control and dictate to you and tell you what you should do now you are old enough to take your own decision 
and you can tell in a polite respectful way to your parents mom dad i am old enough now to take care of my family my decision so please allow me and i will take care of you i will meet your needs uh, as long as i can so give that assurance let them not think that once my son got married i lost my son i lost my daughter let them not think like like that because the strength of a church depends on the quality of the homes in the church if you two are fighting all to all all the time what can you expect to contribute to the church when you come here if your family you are not able to um control the people in your own home what can you do in the church of the living god if you are not practicing sanctification and holiness the fear of god in your own life personally individually you can't expect that to happen in the church here by attending church for 2 hours in a week that will not change you what we emphasize here in the church is how you live between sundays at home in the office in on the road and in your relationships with one another how you are during the week makes you the person that you are on sunday don't think that by sitting i i was talking to a couple of people before this meeting i was telling them by coming and sitting in a church will not make you a christian nobody will become a christian by sitting in a church if i go and sit in a garage i can't expect to become a car it's as as simple as that so brothers and sisters when you come come with a clear conscience having settled everything at home if you have something some tension or some grudge between the two of you settle it the bible says let not the sun go down upon your wrath that's a maximum you can wait till the evening but before you go to bed make sure that everything is settled then you sleep peacefully otherwise don't carry it forward like you know in accounts they say carried over or brought forward from the previous page or previous account so don't let that be carry, carried over or brought forward settle it that day have a short account with each other and with god as well then your life will be glorious and give yourself to each other it's very important that you give time to each other and uh, spend time with each other quality time talking and uh, maybe the husband comes back home tired don't immediately go and dump upon him all that happened during the day give him some time to rest relax and regain his or recompose his mind and regain his strength then afterwards when he is in a relaxed mood you can share what happened during the day at home with children those things and he also may have had a very hard day in the office so men are not very uh, you know vocal and expressive like the women because they keep most of the things they bottle it up and keep it to themselves god has given them that ability for men they don't cry as much as you do sisters you cry and you let it out that is the way you 
you let your uh, tension out. But man is not like that. Man is made differently. And also, woman is made differently. We need to understand that. And for a man, physical satisfaction and food is more important. Like there is a saying in the world, the shortest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. They say that means if you cook well, your husband will be happy with you. Anyway, it depends on person to person how good a cook you are. But, you see, man's needs are different. He, is, he has waited all these years, a couple of decades or three decades, to marry, living a self-controlled life, preserved himself for you. And uh, now, he has every right over your body as much as you have right over his body. Because once you become husband and wife, we lose control, in a sense, of our body. Now, my body belongs to my wife, and she belongs to me. This is marital relationship. And you may wonder why my husband is all the time wanting to have physical relationship with me. That's because he's a man. He's made that way. You can't expect your husband to climb on the table or the chair when he sees a cockroach or a lizard. Do you expect him to do that? No. You do that because you are a woman. You are scared of cockroaches and lizards or things like that. Your husband is not like that. Your husband is made differently and your wife is made differently. And uh, you husbands, you may wonder why for every little thing she keeps on crying and she has a long face. That is her temperament. That is the way she is made. That's the way she lets out her inbuilt tension. So understand each other and give room for each other. And be quick to acknowledge your fault and see that by the end of the day you are one again. So that's very important, dear brothers and sisters. And at the same time, don't deprive the other person of their marital rights. If you deprive that, thinking that you can teach him a lesson, then don't be surprised if that person looks somewhere else. Then it will be too late for you to mend it. So don't lose your life partner by depriving of their rights. And another thing that we notice in the church is sometimes married couples, they don't seem to learn things in spite of us talking to them. Umpteen times, they come back with the same problem over and over again. And not only that, they go around publishing it to others. When, see, God has made you as one. When you acknowledge that you are no longer two, but you are one. If you understand that in a proper way, and when you go and tell about the faults and the weakness of your life partner to others, what you're actually doing is you're stripping yourself in front of others. Because you're one now. Would you like to do that 
physically before somebody you don't do that but how often some of you i don't want to name them have done it before other families other brothers other sisters telling about the weakness of your husband and your wife that is evil it is madness as mad as stripping yourself naked before people if somebody strips themselves naked here in front of everybody what would you do you cover them up wrap them up call an ambulance send them to you know where to send them to don't let that happen and don't walk around naked like that we heard about that a few sundays back when brother zack was here clothe yourself with humility if you clothe yourself with humility you will not be walking naked remember that any every time you talk about your husband's or your wife's weakness to somebody or it could be even to your own parents don't do that try to resolve it within the four walls of your home talk to each other and get reconciled if it goes beyond that and you need help there are always mature brothers mature families and elders in the church you can talk to them they will promise you they keep confidential these issues and they will not go and talk to others and uh, brothers and sisters please be very careful about this don't go and strip your husband or your wife before others and yourself also so clothe yourself with humility if you clothe yourself with humility then you will not resort to these things and after you get married you get children and when you have children men especially i am talking to you be considerate about your wives about your wife's health because they need time to recuperate to get back to normalcy get back their strength from their weakness and they are constantly feeding the child and uh, there is you know 24/7 they will be on their toes to take care of the baby husband goes back to sleep he is snoring the wife has to a little movement of the child the wife is so alert and attentive to the baby and she is deprived of her rest and sleep and she wakes up in the morning haggard and tired so you need to understand that don't expect the food to be on your table in the morning for breakfast if the wife has had a very bad time in the night all through the night child crying baby crying and baby is not well and stress like that sometimes mothers can go bonkers they say they become hysterical that has got to do with you know child bearing and be very considerate that's why the bible says live with your wife in an understanding way knowing that she is a he man she is a weaker vessel she is not like you she is a weaker vessel and help them if the breakfast is not ready i read the other day just yesterday one boy killed his mother 16 or 18 year old boy because the breakfast was not ready he killed his mother i mean 
It's evil. This is spirit of evil taking control of young people these days. If you being a husband, if you also get angry with your wife because the breakfast is not ready, you can eat outside, no? These days there are umpteen uh, eateries available on the road and outside, I mean in the office also. So you can go and have your breakfast and go to your office. What prevents you? Your wife can have some rest and give her proper rest that she needs. And then after one child comes, don't be in a hurry to have another one immediately. That will add to further tension to your wife. Don't say that God gives. Some people have that. No, what to do? God gives. No, if you don't come together, how God will give? So learn to have some self-restraint, self, uh, self-control, and take some medical advice, consult some doctor. You can space your children so that, you know, once they become two years or something like that, you can think of having another child. So like, then don't go on. We had one family here, went on having child after child after child and sometimes twins and boy, they were on a verge of suicide. And God sent the elders at the nick of time to go and help them. If they had not gone, that family would not be alive today. So be very careful to the needs of your partner. And learn to, you know, love and appreciate your partner when they are alive, not after they are dead and gone. You know, so many people tell lies at their funeral, at the funeral of their dear ones and cry the rest of their life for having treated them badly after the husband or the wife is dead. Why don't you love them and appreciate them when they still have breath in their nostrils. It's easy, like we sing in that song, easy to find fault and criticize. But what will you thus achieve? How quickly life here passes on its way. We sing that song. And some people who have lost their life partner, today they are regretting, I wish I had treated him a little better. I wish I had been a little more considerate. But it's too late, brothers, sisters. Love and appreciate while they are still here. And Another thing in the family is when it comes to finance, especially those of you young people, newly married people, those who have been married for the last five, ten years, be very careful with your finance because days are not like your grandfather's days. In those days only your grandfather or even your father used to just work and support the whole family. Those days things were very cheap affordable, but today it is not like that. Probably you young people today are earning your first salary could be your father's last salary. So just because you're earning in lakhs, don't just, you know, spend it away. Some families have told when we had plenty we just splurged it, but now we are in need. Don't, you know, Proverbs 6, 6, it says, go to the ant and learn from it. You know how big the ant is? Sometimes it is, without the specs, sometimes it's difficult for me to see some tiny ants, not the normal ants I'm talking about. 
tiny ants. You see how, how tiny they are. And how tinier still must be their head and their brain. In that little brain it has some sense that winter is coming. Rainy season is coming. I will not be able to go out and crawl and collect. So they collect it in summer, and store it in summer for winter. So learn from it, it says. The Bible encourages you to save. Save. Joseph saved for the next seven years of famine. And the Bible says, learn from the ant to save. Save up for a rainy season. Save up for unforeseen expenses. Suddenly, you may have to pay a huge thing for your child's education. Or maybe the next confinement. Or things like that. Or maybe house rent. These days in Bangalore, it is not like other states where only one or two months advance you can give. Here it is ten months something, depending upon the owners again. So you have expenditure. Don't just blow it away. Don't say, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. That is not concern. It's not talking about this. It's talking about your anxiety, your worry. Don't worry about tomorrow doesn't mean that don't plan for tomorrow. Like somebody said, live as if you're going to die today, but plan as if you're going to live next hundred years. So your planning should be like that. Even in India, after the independence, they started having five-year plan. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. The new generation may not know about it. They have done away with that five-year plan. The government of India used to have five-year plan. They used to allocate so much of money for one particular thing to develop or a few particular thing to develop in the next five years. That was called five-year plan. So like that you plan for your future, your child, child's education, your house rent, medical expenses. Do take medical insurance so that you won't end up in any medical emergency, you don't have to go and beg and borrow. So try as much as possible to save. You know, there are two types of people, they say. One is poor, one is rich. The poor spends and spends and spends and whatever is left, he will save. I read about this. And the rich, they become rich because they first save, and what is left, they use it. They spend it. I am not telling you to go either this way or that way. You be in the middle of the road and plan properly. Ask the Lord to use your finance wisely. We have seen some families here. They've been earning quite a lot. But when they got retired, there's hardly anything left in their hand. And they don't even have a shelter on their head. And they're dependent on their children. It shouldn't be like that, brothers and sisters. You can, if there is, where there is a will, there is a way. You can cut down on your expenditure, unnecessary expenses. You can cut down. And you can save, you can use it. And... Be wise in that, and especially when it comes to young people, newly married people, those who are married five, ten years, they want to go for housing loan or vehicle loan. My, you think about your parents, at what age they had their house or vehicle. Maybe around the time when they were getting retired or perhaps after they got retired from their Retirement money, they constructed a, a roof on their head or bought a vehicle. But today's young people, the moment they get a job, they think about a car or uh, you no know, expensive, whatever it is, or go for a housing loan. Brothers, the employment 
market is very volatile today you, you have seen that just a couple of years back when covid hit how many times pe people how many people lost their jobs and they were on the street and they were in need and they had to look for another job like that even today so many companies are laying off people because of various reasons this job what you have today you may not have it tomorrow so be little wise don't go for these big housing loans and vehicle loans and tomorrow if you lose your job who will pay for the emi they will come and take back your vehicle or your house they auction it and you lose everything don't be so foolish be wise little i mean young married couple i feel sorry for them there is another family here who took a loan in his son's name it ran into nearly a crore i'm talking about a few years back a crore that time was a huge amount even today it is so he was having a very small clerical job paying a few thousands i wondered how in the world can they think of taking such a huge loan and the owner of the house had they had not read it the agreement properly you know there can be so many things which they will come and in a hurry they will get you to sign and he signed it and there was some clause in that which uh, uh, was not in favor of that man so he has to he had to lose so much of money he neither got the house nor the money and ended up like that why in the world he want to get into all this kind of financial issues god has given you some sense and god has given you people around you who are little older and more experienced please talk to them get some financial advice and when i say some advice it's before i forget that if you take help from any brother or sister it could be financial advice or it may be medical advice or it may be some work that you get done in your house please don't take it for granted because he is a brother or a sister in the church pay them as you would pay if you had gone to an advocate or a financial consultant his fees or a medical uh, fees to a doctor who is in the church pay them don't take advantage thinking that they are a sister brother in the, in the church if they don't take that is fine but you on your part offer it to them that is righteousness so please do not take advantage of each other and be very careful when it comes to finance again i want to stress on this don't get into debt try to live within your income cut your coat according to the cloth that you have even if you don't have one uh sleeve doesn't matter you can it doesn't matter you can still live with one sleeve brothers i'm talking about so even if your coat is not too long enough you can have a waist coat and also there is a saying in the world don't keep up with the joneses you know what it means wife will say look at that family they have this car we also will buy this car or see they have this kind of flat they paid 3 crores why you want to compare yourself with others you live within your means god may have drawn a bigger circle around his finance financial thing so he may be able to afford it but your financial circle may be much smaller than that live within that and don't try to compete with each other they have this we will also have this they spent so much for their son's wedding we'll spend this much for our son's wedding 
what are you doing are you competing here are you trying to seek honor this is nothing but seeking honor I want to please men if you spend 1 crore still people will say this should have been like this that should have been like that or if you spend 10 crores also for your wedding or whatever there will be still people complaining about things so there is no, no end to complaints and you young couples when you have children and you want to celebrate their birthdays children are children babies are babies they don't know what is happening first year birthday up to third year fourth year fifth year they don't really understand what is happening and you want to throw a party because you went for somebody else's child's birthday and party they were able to afford it and when you cannot afford it why you want to you know venture into that go for loans or trying to please because they call me i have to call them back there is no such thing if they misunderstand you let them misunderstand you the thing that we say here and emphasize in this church is first of all be free from the opinion of others if you are free if you seek to please men you can never be the servant of god galatians 1:10 paul says very clearly if i am still trying to seek uh, if i am still trying to please men i am not a servant of christ he says so be free from the opinion of others i am not saying that you should disregard uh, people but don't bother about what anybody thinks you live according to your means if you are able to just have it within your family have it please go ahead and have it your child's birthday or your own birthday or your partner's birthday you don't need to call other families to please them because they called you you don't have to and people understand that and please please for god's sake don't get into debts which you cannot pay try to live within your means and keep things simple and also when it comes to visiting each other's homes brothers and sisters gone are those days when we were small we used to just you know go and plonk into our grandmother's house or uncles and aunties houses gone are those days today things are different and we are not living in villages we are living in city bangalore city and things are different here culture is different here you can't just go and plonk yourself in some some family at their meal time and become a burden without informing you can call them up tell them is it okay if i come and especially avoid going at their meal time if you're going have your meal at home and then go there or take your meal and go there and if you want to have somebody over especially brothers please check with your wives whether she is able to entertain those guests you say because i want to be large hearted i want to be hospitable the bible says be hospitable some have entertained strangers even without knowing it angels came as strangers so you check with your wife whether she is able to you know cook for that family if you have them over if she is not well if she is not happy about it call them for a cup of tea and when you visit a home dear brothers and sisters you know john wesley told his co-workers when you visit a home 
or even in his church, he told, don't be there for more than half an hour. Beyond 30 minutes, you tend to, your conversation tend to switch over to someone else. Then gossip starts. That's how you get into sin. You know, 30 minutes you can carry on a good conversation. But after that, you know, you have nothing else to speak. And then you talk about so-and-so, the so-and-so family. That is none of your business. You don't need to. So 30, 40 minutes is ideal. Then after that, you see, sense the host, whether he is finished with you or he would like to still spend time with you. You can make it, you can sense it by their body language. If they start yawning and or looking at their mobile or, you know, please be sensitive, sense it and get out of the place as early as possible. Don't think they are very happy to have you. They may be smiling at you because it's only, you know, courteous to do that. But they may not be happy to have you more than 40 minutes. Some people go and plonk themselves uninvited. You know why? They wanted to give them surprise. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, these days nobody is waiting for you to give a surprise. Everybody has their own problem and own issues to look at. So, be wise, be sensitive and be considerate. And another thing when you visit a home, I really appreciate there are some homes where the parents have brought up their children very well. I really appreciate them. Hats off to them. And there are some families, even today, their children are unruly and uncontrollable. They're very naughty. They are not taught at home, and obviously you can't expect them to behave well in somebody else's home when you visit. So such parents, what you do, before you visit a home, tell your children to behave themselves. And if they don't behave properly in that house, they throw things and make it topsy-turvy and break things, you make good for that. Don't assume that because he's a brother, he will not mind because one plate or glass is broken. You offer to pay. If he refuses, that's a different thing. But you offer to pay. The same thing we say here also. When your children destroy anything here in CFC, you as a parent take that responsibility and pay for it. And after you go back home, discipline your child, correct them. Okay, don't let this happen. And don't let some families think, oh, this family again, it's coming. No? That, don't give that kind of impression. They should be happy to have you if you go a second time. So teach your children when they are angry. If they behave themselves at home well, they will behave themselves in somebody else's home as well as in the church. So take this ser seriously. And they don't, you know, children don't come up everything, you know, packed in their head as to how they should behave. And they are all taught. That's why we send them to school to educate them and also we educate them at home and correct them and discipline them and respect each other's boundaries. And when you visit a home, don't be so, too pally to go to their kitchen and uh, dining hall and run into their bedrooms and all that. You are a guest there. Remember, your area is sitting room. 
don't go beyond that into their kitchen and go and open their dishes and see what they have cooked what they have made for lunch or what is cooking and open their fridge and see or their wardrobes see even if you are their parents don't do that in your children's homes because you are not the head of that ho- home it is the head of the home is the person staying there not you the father or the mother or even you brother or a sister going into somebody's house and doing all these things this is okay in villages villages don't have these rules and they are not cultured we are living in a cultured society and in cities and towns and not villages in a village everybody knows everybody and what happens in one house the whole village knows and what happen what it is cooked in one house the whole village knows so village is like that so don't bring that culture here in bangalore remember you are a city dweller now okay it was okay when you are living in your hometown but when you are here don't impose yourself and don't try to control somebody else's family when you visit them that's not your boundary and uh, also let your partner know what's going on in your private life your health or your office situation or the stress that you are going through or the financial problem that you are having with some foolish brother who made a comment that our wives should not know how much we are earning oh are you one or you are still two when we say we are married we are one your wife should know your financial situation how much you are earning what is your bank balance and how we can plan it together don't be on maharaja and dictator prin i mean kings won't tell if you are behaving like a king at home and not treating your wife like the queen that is okay that is not here in this church outside it may be but here we want them to be one in mind one in spirit and one in all these things if you have any health problem share it with your husband or with your wife don't hide it and don't give them a heart attack later on so share it with others i mean with your life partner be open be transparent and if you are struggling in your thought life or you are having problem in the office with the opposite sex seek help either from your life partner or from other brothers and sisters in the church in whom you have confidence who will not go tom toming it please and some of you brothers and sisters who are coordinators you have responsibility in the areas which is allotted to you but don't be too legalistic supposing you see an unmarried brother or a sister sitting in married couples meeting don't pull them out and say this is not for you go away from here or vice versa you see a married person sitting in young people's single young people's meeting don't tell them to get out and don't be so legalistic these things are not so important what is serious is sin these things are okay they will also learn something from married people's meeting young people in fact i have asked some young people who are about to get married and who are engaged 
to attend this meeting and uh, those of you who have not heard in your anger days what ang people are hearing if you would like to go and attend some of those you can go and attend so that you will be able to help the anger ones so don't be too legalistic in pulling them people out and you know treating them in a harsh manner let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus says so yes if you have doubt you can always check with uh, your seniors or even those who are in charge or the elders and remember all these things that we have shared and uh, the husbands take the lead don't be led by your wife god has made you the head of the home and he has called you to give direction and guidance in the home you be the head don't hand it over to your wife otherwise you may have to wear a sari and come don't do that okay god has made you the head and be the head and at the same time don't treat your wife like one you know subordinate she is not a subordinate she is joint heir with you you know what is joint heir when you have a current account in the bank in your name and in your wife's name you say hey, what so okay my even if my wife doesn't sign i'll sign and go to the bank what will they do they will not honor your check the same way if you pray when your relationship with the wife is not good you think your check will be honored in the bank of heaven when you pray it will bounce it will not even go beyond this ceiling the word of god says that peter says that if you are not living in an understanding way with your wife your prayers will not be heard can it be any more clear than this take it seriously dear brothers and sisters what you heard today and uh, somebody asked whether is it okay for the wife to work if the husband is not earning enough and you are not able to make ends meet by all means work look up for another job or the husband may can take another part time job to make ends meet but if you want to keep up with the joneses again want to live at a higher standard like so and so like so and so then who suffers your health and your children and they will be deprived of motherly affection and love and care and attention so please give it to them and if you have to try for a better paying job by all means do that there's nothing wrong that you should stick to one job only and be loyal to that no company will be loyal to you if you are in trouble no company will come and help you if they are in trouble they will sack you but if you are in trouble no company will help you so if you can get a better job by all means keep changing jobs but don't be a job hopper all your life i heard of a brother who was here who is no more now many years ago probably 25 years ago when he was alive or perhaps more than 30 years ago he said in his he also died while he was in service he didn't live till his retirement because of his health problem he said he changed 20 jobs in probably in his 20 years of service or what 
there was another brother here now he is not with us he is not coming he also every time i used to meet him and ask him where you are working he will say some company new company and i asked him once why you are changing so often so many companies you know there is a saying rolling stones gather no moss so people jumping from company to company they will withdraw the pf they will withdraw everything spend on it and spend all that go to another company join as a fresher again as a probationer then they get uh, before they get con- confirmed in that company they will jump into another company which pays a little more like that by the end of the uh, service they will be left with nothing don't be like that if you get a good stable job stay with that stick with that and again learn from the ant and be the head of the home and keep control over your children and one final thing don't look to the future with apprehension and fear and anxiety you see the lord has promised i will never leave you nor forsake you if he has said that he has actually said that three times in the original i will never 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 leave you it's as if the father son and the holy spirit are telling i will never leave you nor forsake you so that is in connection with money he's telling so god has promised to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in christ jesus if you seek god's kingdom and his righteousness god will see to it that you prosper in what you are you do that promise was given in the first psalm in the old covenant whatever he does he prospers claim that if you are not prospering in what you are doing ask the lord lord what's wrong with me where am i not obeying you or not keeping proper relationship or whatever it is what is wrong with me show me be willing to mend yourself then see why god won't bless you so look ahead with hope and faith and confidence in your heavenly father he will guide you give you wisdom if you lack wisdom the bible says ask without wavering and god without without reproach he will give you wisdom to live as you should live if some of you think that i am wise you know why i am wise bible says if you walk with wise men you will become wise so being with brother charles i have also gained some wisdom in life yeah that's very important that's one of the reason we come to church see like brother zack was emphasizing about fellowship the fellowship means the relationship with the father that's what jesus desired when he saw all of us not having relationship with the father jesus decided to die on the cross to restore that relationship that's the main thing uh, which has drawn us together like this as a church but now we have to be disciples how we know that we are disciples because you know when we have a good relationship with the father it will affect our relationship with others around us especially home that's why home is very important brazak has told many times that uh, what is the strength of the church a strong homes are the strength of the church that is very important that's the reason um, elders have been burdened so so that to see that whether uh, the homes are becoming stronger so uh, like brother charles was mentioning in the beginning just because you come to this church 
uh, don't assume that everything changes. See, Judas also attended Judas Iscariot, attended Jesus Church. But you know, it didn't go well with him because Jesus said, a wise man is the one who hears my word and acts on it. It's very important. If we don't act on it, it won't produce results. Uh, it's like uh, your children going to school. So, maybe I'll just read this verse. Ephesians chapter 5. It's very important. See, the home relationships, Brazak has emphasized this many times. See, home relationship. Brazak was mentioning this today also in the morning. I think uh, many important things he addressed in the morning. Uh, when it comes to uh, chapter 6, Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might, put on the full armor. See, our struggle is not with flesh and blood, verse 12, with the powers. See, you know, our battle is against the powers, sin, uh, Satan. When we have that uh, struggle, see, just before that, there are a lot of emphasis on family life. And then, uh, just before that, what we see before family life is uh, emphasized, chapter 5, verse 18 says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel that's very, very important for us, that Jesus didn't uh, dare to go into ministry before he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So I have asked some young people come and ask, I'm thinking to get married. I, I, I asked them this question, are you ready to get married? Have, what, like, what have you done? Have you done just to get into a job you study for 12, 13 or 15 years you study to get into a job? Marriage is much more serious. I asked them this question, have you read this book, Sex, Love, Marriage? Another book, Finding God's Will. If you have not even read that, um, not reading, studying, so getting to know God's heart and God's mind and God's will, if you have not done that, how will you expect God to be there with you? Uh, if you show eagerness, God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Definitely God will help. Even myself, I have told many people, I don't come to church because it's Sunday, I'm an elder, I have work, responsibility. No, not really that. I am weak. I am helpless. That's the reason I come to the church, to meet with godly brothers. And also, as we grow, as I grow, I have responsibility toward others to help them, to follow Jesus, be a good disciple. So that, that's the reason I think Brother Charles have touched all the points which I was also thinking. Yeah, I just would like to read for husbands this one verse and close with that. That is 1 Peter 3, 7, which Brother, Zach, uh, sorry, Brother Charles mentioned at the end. 1 Peter 3, 7, it's a well-known verse. You husbands likewise live with your wives in an understanding way as uh, with a weaker vessel since she is a woman and grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. You know, I remember asking this question, Lord, uh, oh, my wife is weak. So it's a general thing. Oh, my wife is weak, and my wife makes mistakes. She's imperfect. And uh, because of that, I feel frustrated. And then, Lord, uh, and then you are uh, expecting me to uh, live with her in an understanding way and if I find it difficult, if I don't do that and you are expecting, uh, means you are saying that you don't listen to my prayer, oh, it's too difficult. Uh, because of her weakness, you are already saying that she is weak and on top of that you are expecting me to be uh, forgiving, understanding and if I don't do that, you are not listening to uh, my prayers. You know what God is testing us, husbands. This applies to wives also. It works both the ways. The, what the Lord is saying is like, uh, we heard Brazak also saying, being merciful. See, when I have, I have received much mercy, see, what is the gap between me and uh, the Lord? It's such a big gap. If after receiving so much mercy and kindness and forgiveness, 
If I don't show mercy, little bit mercy to somebody who is weaker, that is where I am tested. Then God says, then why should I hear, listen to your prayer? Why should I answer? It applies in all the areas of our life. You know, if how I am tested, how I treat somebody below me, that's how my Christianity is tested. Somebody who is weaker to me. See, that is that is why these are whatever whatever we heard is very important. And uh, may the Lord help us. Even I have been blessed listening to all that Brother Charles shared. Brother Charles, would you like to? There is one uh, point which escaped our notice is one uh, brothers those those of us who have children as they keep growing we put them in school and college and things like that one thing i would earnestly like to tell you please for heaven's sake please do not put pressure on your children this becoming more and more rampant these days that every way every parent wants their son or daughter to be somebody in the world to get the highest marks and to be a doctor or a engineer or a scientist or all no what they have not become their unrealized dreams they want to thrust on them please for heaven's sake do not pressurize your children they have got their intelligence from you and they have a limitation the more you pressurize then there can you know there can be an explosion or implosion so then it will be too late i know certain families where the parents from when the children were young they kept pressurizing 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 so much so because they wanted them to become somebody and to show in the church that my son is like this my daughter is like this are you going to exhibit your sons and daughters and they pressurize so much they i'm sorry to say that they lost their mental balance and they got addicted to some things which they shouldn't have it's all because of you parents i don't blame the children i feel sorry for the parents because they wanted their children to become somebody in the world they pressurized them and today they are regretting because the child has gone bonkers lost mental balance and got addicted and it's beyond their control and somehow some have left the home you want it like that you want your homes to be broken homes your children to be wayward like this and mentally imbalanced they have limitations as much as you have limitations if your boss tries to extract beyond what you are able to what will happen to you you will also become a wreck one day so don't put pressure on your children it doesn't matter if they fail one year what will happen the sky will not fall down the world will not come to a to an end please give space to your children to grow up don't put pressure on them and don't try to realize your dreams through them that's all i can say about children yeah let's bow our heads in prayer and close the meeting